Today, we're going to talk about the intro and ending for the new season of Attack on Titan. There's a lot of symbolism within both songs, so we're going to break it down in a pretty specific way. I'll be doing analysis with and without manga spoilers. It will be marked in the chapters at the bottom of the screen, so if you're not a manga reader, you can skip ahead easily. So, let's get into it. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe. 92% of my viewers are not subscribed. 92. I would just really appreciate it if you just hit the button. It's so easy, it's not going to hurt you, and I would really appreciate it if you could do it. Anyway, let's get started with the rumbling. I feel like the intro to the rumbling is pretty self-explanatory. The rumbling has been teased in Attack on Titan since the ending of Season 2, and every season it seems to become a much bigger part of the plot. I mean, by the end of Season 4 Part 1, the main plan in consideration on Paradise was using the rumbling as a deterrent for their own protection, and I think what this intro is trying to tell us is that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when and how. Moving on to the first verse. I think this verse is either an inner dialogue by Eren, or, more likely, a conversation with Armin or Mikasa. Eren knows he's done things that have hurt them, and done things that they consider morally wrong, but he never wanted to. He never wanted to fight anyone, but he feels like he doesn't have a choice if he wants to save them. I think these thoughts are probably more aimed at Mikasa than Armin, but it could really go either way. As for the pre-chorus, I don't really think there's much to be deciphered in terms of a deeper meaning lyrically, at least not without some manga spoilers. So for now, we're just going to move on to the chorus. I think this is the most interesting line in the chorus, because I think it's connected to what he was saying in verse 1. He's basically saying that if he loses or dies, he wants his friends to move on from him and leave him behind, and that he doesn't really believe that he is worth fighting for, unlike them. Obviously, this lyrical analysis is just speculation, but I do think a lot of these lyrics align directly with Aaron's character, as he has always cared about others' safety more than his own. Now I want to talk about some of the visual symbolism. The first thing I want to talk about is how we can see Mikasa actually taking off her scarf. According to Isayama, this scarf represents an engagement ring from Aaron, so her taking off this scarf could be symbolic of the distance that has grown between them over the course of Season 4. Another visual detail I noticed is that in verse 1, the white birds in the courtyard fly in the opposite direction of Aaron, and later on when Aaron is on top of the wall, the darker grey or black birds fly in the same direction as him. Obviously this could just be some sort of coincidence, but it could also be meant to symbolize Eren's transition from a protagonist into something more like an anti-hero, like we saw in Season 4. Another fun detail that a lot of people have noticed is that in this shot of Porco, you can actually see Ymir in the window. I don't really think there's any deeper meaning to this, I just thought it was a cool little detail. The last thing I want to point out is this really quick scene of blood dropping on a flower. We'll be talking about that later, so just keep it in the back of your mind for now. Alright, I now want to talk about the opening with manga spoilers. So if you are not a manga reader, please skip ahead to the next chapter using the timestamp in the description or just by scrolling ahead. This is your last chance. We are about to get into manga spoilers. Alright, so I want to talk about verse 1 a little bit less vaguely. I think this is supposed to be Aaron talking about how he never wanted to do the rumbling, but he really felt like he had no choice. We can see based on his trip to Marley and the deliberation within the walls that he doesn't think the island solution will work, and he obviously doesn't want to go ahead with Zeke's plan either, which leaves him with no other choice. I also think the pre-course has some context for Annie's return, and the way this line lines up with her visually just kind of makes too much sense. I also think Mikasa taking off her scarf here could just be a reference to her fighting without it a few times in the manga. Now it's time to get into the ending. A full version of this song was released, but we're just going to cover the lyrics in the ending of Attack on Titan, starting off with the first verse. I think the second line in the first verse is especially interesting. Whenever I shot, I became closer to the hero. I think this reinforces what Aaron was talking about in the intro, about not wanting to become someone special, but doing so anyway just by fighting for his freedom. Moving on to the second verse. 
僕はダメってあいつはいいのそこに壁があっただけなのに生まれてしまったさだめなげくな僕らはみんな I think obviously the first line is just Aaron being insecure about Jean or Armin or Connie having better chances with Mikasa than he does Jokes aside, the rest of the verse is actually pretty interesting. I think it's really talking about how they perceive their freedom as a subject of Ymir, and whether or not they should complain about not being free, because it's something they've had to fight for their entire lives, and should almost just be expected by them now. It could also have another meaning, about how the subjects might have to redefine how they look at being free, as being free from walls is very different than being free from persecution. I think talking more about how Attack on Titan discusses freedom could be a very interesting discussion, but that's for another day. For now, we're going to move on to the pre chorus. <laughs> The pre-chorus brings up a topic that hasn't been explicitly talked about yet, which is having somewhere to return to. So much of this show is about finding freedom, that having somewhere to call home is never really a priority. It's always been about what's outside, where we're going, not where we'll return to. But having somewhere to return to is part of being free. And I think what the pre-chorus is saying is that to be truly free, paradise has to be safe. And that while paradise is under threat, it can never truly achieve freedom. Now maybe I'm reading too far into this, but I think it makes sense, considering what's literally going on in the show right now. Now I want to talk a little bit about the transition. It's just one line, but I think it does show another core aspect of Aaron's character, which is that he doesn't just want to survive anymore. He wants to thrive, which is something he's never done before. Whether he was surviving in the walls, surviving titans, surviving combat, his life has always been about survival and fighting to get what he wants. We're going to move on to the chorus for now. <laughs> The chorus has some very interesting parallels when compared to the ending of season 1. While the ending of season 1 was mostly Mikasa talking to Eren, this ending feels like it's more Eren talking to Mikasa, and basically saying that he's willing to protect her no matter what it takes. I think the rest of the ending from here on out is pretty self-explanatory, so we're going to move on to some of the visual symbolism. The first thing I want to talk about is how we can once again see blood drops on a flower. This was shown in the opening, and it's also happened a few times throughout the show, such as in this flashback and when Hannes is being eaten. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know exactly what this is supposed to symbolize, so if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. I also think that the bird could be symbolic of being trapped within the walls, of course, or it could be about the island's perceived freedom, and how they had much less freedom than they originally thought they did. Alright, now we're going to be talking about some manga spoilers that I think are in the closing. This is your last chance, if you're anime only, thank you for watching, and please subscribe. Anyway, let's get into this. For the line, the evil who has the same body and same temperature, I think this is most likely referencing the original source of life, Haluchan, whatever you want to call this thing, as it is basically the primary evil in the world. It has caused so much suffering for the entire world, as well as Eren, and it's now just a part of him. This is probably a bit of a stretch, but I honestly can't think of anything else that this line is referencing. There's nothing really manga exclusive in verse 2, so we're going to move to the pre-chorus, which is definitely about why he destroyed as much of the world as he did. Eren knew if he destroyed any less, paradise would be destroyed in retaliation fairly quickly. And while it was destroyed in the end, I think his primary goal was to give his friends freedom, not to bring everlasting peace to paradise. The transition line could be what we talked about earlier, or it could also be a reference to the conversation he had with Armin in 139. And I think the chorus is basically saying that he doesn't regret doing the rumbling, even if it was a mistake, because he fully believes that it will keep his friends safe in the long run. As for visual references, I think the scarf transforming into a bird could be meant to represent Mikasa freeing Eren, 
and we obviously all know how she did that. There are also a bunch of scenes of paradise after it's been abandoned or destroyed, and they are some of the most beautiful scenes in this season's opening and closing. This could be meant to show that there is beauty in endings, and that letting things go is a part of any story, and possibly life itself. And that's all I've got for this analysis. Thank you all for watching, and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I'll be back Monday for another breakdown, so if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. See you then.